Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome to Siege Plate Channel. My name is Brooke. If you've been here before, then you know what we're doing here. Urban and suburban gardening. If you're new here, we're doing urban and suburban gardening and a little bit of cooking. Today we're talking about which seeds to direct sow, which seeds to sow in some biodegradable pots due to root sensitivity, and uh, which seeds I just kind of forgot to sow. So, so, so. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. First, I want to show you something I'm doing right now. I'm multitasking. I'm doing a lot of things right now. I am letting myself tan marinate before I um, go wash it off. I am rehydrating from the workout I just did. Um, I'm about to sow some seeds. I'm filming a YouTube video, and while I'm doing all of those things, I'm also making salsa. So salsa is one of my favorite things to make in the summer when I've got tomatoes and peppers. Um, I found a really good recipe last year for smoked salsa, <laughs> um, but I don't remember what the proportions were. So what I did was I tried to remember the proportions the best I could so that I could give it a shot uh, with store-bought produce so that I'm not wasting my very hard-earned produce once it actually starts coming out of the ground. garlic, tomatillos, poblanos, jalapenos, serranos, onion, tomatoes. It's gonna be real good. So, um, back to my multitasking. Yeah, yeah, back to all of my crazy multitasking. Okay, so back to all of my crazy multitasking. Now, I think it's really confusing when you first start growing things, especially if you're growing from seed. I think it gets confusing on what you're supposed to start from seed, what you're not supposed to start from seed, what you're supposed to direct sow, what you're not supposed to direct sow. It's always, it's also pretty like dependent on the timing of your garden, um, what kind of resources you have to even start seeds early and blah, blah, blah. So I'm just gonna take you through what I do and my logic around what I should direct sow versus what I should seed start. You guys know I already seed started tomatoes, peppers. I have a bunch of different flowers started that needed a little bit more time. Some of the flowers that I'm growing that I will just direct sow are sunflowers and zinnias. They both do really well direct sown and they're both pretty sensitive to root disturbance. Now I do know some gardeners that are more north they will start their zinnias inside um, and just make sure that they don't disturb their roots too much when they plant them out. Um, we have such a long hot season that I'm not super concerned about like not getting zinnias in time. So I will be direct sowing those. Um, and I actually grabbed, they don't have any like pictures on them, but I'll read off their varieties and put little photos. These are from Victory Seeds. Um, these are Sun Gold, Velvet Queen, Lemon Queen, Autumn Beauty, Chocolate Cherry, and an all sorts mix. So some of these will also be going in my grandma's garden. That's where some of these are destined to be. Um, so that takes care of the flowers that I, and well, the other flowers that I'm direct sowing are these Apricot Lemonade Cosmos. And so these are gonna go in front of the Vago garden bed and I'm actually gonna be putting some of my dahlias or at least one of my dahlias right in the middle of the Vago. Um, so that's where the Cosmos are going and they're getting direct seeded. Um, so that pretty much takes care of the rest of the flowers that I'm growing. So let's talk about herbs. Um, so I actually had to throw away all of my basil seedlings because they got some kind of mite on them. Um, I'm pretty sure it was from a plant that I actually brought in um, from an outside source. Um, and so I had to get rid of all of those and throw them away. Um, and so I actually need to restart basil, which is fine because I found more varieties of basil than I wanted to grow. Honestly, I think one of the keys, this is just slightly off topic, I think one of the keys to uh, the fact that I don't really have to use many pest control measures is that I interplant my garden with a lot of flowers and a lot of herbs that are like really stinky um, and pests don't really like that um, and it also invites other predators in so um, I also have like a little family of birds that um, that like nested and I just let their nest be and so all of the little birds still just like hang out around here because they know that my garden's like a big source of uh, food for them so 
Anyways, just kind of off topic, I am a big believer in interplanting herbs and flowers and all of that stuff into your garden because I just think it creates a lot stronger of a habitat um, for your garden to sustain itself through pest pressure um, organically. So I decided I'm gonna restart some of the basil that I lost, which the basil that I lost is just your typical Italian Genovese basil. Now, I'm also gonna restart some parsley. I really love having parsley in the summer. Even though it grows great, I have parsley popping off here right now. It grows great here in the winter. Um, and then also I picked up some sweet Thai basil. And um, we've actually started getting really into coconut curries, like Thai coconut curries, and like pounding out the curry paste with a mortar and pestle. Um, Cause apparently we just like to punish ourselves. It actually tastes way better. Um, but, a lot of it uses Thai basil, which is super herbaceous, really tasty, so I'm excited to grow some Thai basil. Um, and then I also saw purple basil, which I feel like that's just funsies. Um, and then I've had this cinnamon basil for like 100 years uh, from Baker Creek. Uh, this is actually one of their like old packet, old packets. So those are all the basils I will be starting, um, and I will start those inside. Um, direct sown herbs. I will be direct sowing chamomile. Um, you, you can start it inside, but it kind of grows almost like grass at first and its roots are just really sensitive. So transplanting it gets a little hard. If you live in a warm enough climate, I would heavily recommend just direct sowing it like the day before it's gonna rain and it's warm out. Um, and then the other one is borage. So barrage, borage. Um, these flowers are edible and um, I actually don't even like eating these flowers. This isn't really an edible plant for me, but what it is is it's an early pollinator attractor. Um, bees love this stuff. So I'm going to be putting this in just a few different places throughout the garden um, to attract the bees. So that takes care of herbs that I will be direct sowing and I will be starting. Let's move on to uh, actually let's do cucumbers and I can actually start doing something as I'm talking. So these are called cow pots and these are biodegradable pots made from, I'm pretty sure they just like fry composted cow manure until it's like this papery material. Um, and so the idea is you start seeds in this and then you plant this whole thing in the ground. Now I usually peel off the bottom cause it's usually pretty well rotted at that point. Um, so I peel off the bottom just so the roots have somewhere to go um, and the rest of it will biodegrade in the soil that you put it in. So the reason I'm doing this with cucumbers is because cucumbers roots are pretty sensitive to like being disturbed. Um, they, don't, they don't really like it. They don't like to be disturbed. Um, so we're going to try not to disturb them. Um, and we're gonna try to use these biodegradable pots. Now I've used stuff like this in the past, um, except they weren't necessarily biodegradable. They were like those little, like, they look like hockey pucks and then they expand um, when they get wet. And so I've used those in the past. And what I actually did was I just cut the netting, that netting stuff, I just cut it off and I planted just like the whole thing. Um, and it worked really well. I actually did that with corn. Um, so a corn is another one that I will actually just direct sow. It's super easy to direct sow. The only thing that I have to really think about when I'm thinking about this stuff um, is if I'm direct sowing it at my community garden plot, that's about a 15 minute drive. So by the time I drive there, 15 minutes, I'm there for 15 or 20 minutes, then I come back, that's a 45 minute trip to water some seedlings. So when I direct sow stuff at my community plot, I typically try and time it around like a few days of rain if I can, um, or at least, you know, time it around something like that to make my life slightly easier. I will say, I am looking forward to having a garden that's just all at my house. <laughs> um, it's not too far away, but it also doesn't feel too close. So the types of cucumbers that I'm gonna be growing, um, I'm doing a cucumber wall, or at least that's the idea. Um, so a few of them are cucumbers, one of them's actually a melon, and then the other one is technically a squash. Um, so Armenian white cucumbers, these are actually melons, um, but they trellis up like a cucumber and they kind of look like a cucumber. They're super mild, but really tasty. We're gonna do long green improved cucumbers, lemon cucumbers, just for funsies. 
Um, and then we have Straight 8. And we have Market More. Oh, I almost forgot. I got... Oh, where'd they go? I got Silver Slicers. I gotta go find the seats. Y'all, I don't... I don't want to be dramatic. But this would have been tragic. <laughs> like, I ordered these special because I wanted to grow them. So... Um, anyways, these are the Silver Slicer Cucumber. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about their performance in hot climates. Um, and then the other thing I need to sew today, which I forgot, were these really beautiful uh, Listata di Gandia eggplant. And I probably said that, uh, I probably botched that, so I'm so sorry, whoever's culture I just insulted. And I kind of just want to like start this by saying that, um, you can get as much information as you want on the internet, but nothing replaces your own personal experience with these things. So I can sit here and tell you what works for me and somebody will have a totally different experience on what's worked for them. Really, sometimes it comes down to the fact that you just have to kind of try it um, and go from there. Um, with these biodegradable pots, I will not be doing bottom watering on these guys. I will be um, straight up just watering them from the top. So I don't really know if this actually matters, but whenever I start cucumbers, and cucumbers are one that you can direct sow, or you can also start them from seed. Um, I've done it both ways and it always works. You just have to remember that when you start things direct, you're always going to be waiting a little bit longer. The biggest advantage of starting something from a seed and starting it inside is that you just get a jump on when you get a harvest. Um, and so that's the main advantage of starting seeds this way. Also another reason that I do this is because uh, my backyard garden is on the lower end of sunlight and so I found that germination is a little bit difficult for me back here. So the breeze just came up and it's like I'm feeling like it's not as warm and also it might be loud so that's fine. Um, and so, so yeah I have found way more success in a lower light garden with getting something started so that it already has like a good amount of surface area to photosynthesize and actually grow um and i don't know if that's like real science or if i'm just making that up but i do feel like the light isn't intense enough and it doesn't stick around long enough to actually be conducive to um to germination everything i, I like i've gotten stuff to germinate back here just from seed but I have probably wasted more seed than I have actually gotten to work back here. I got the Silver Slicer Cucumbers from Hudson Valley Seed Company. Oh, cute. And I paid like way too much money for this little like cute package, um, but it was like, that was all they had left, so I, I bought it. Um, but it's got this really beautiful little insert that tells you about it, so that's cool. Some other things that I'm gonna be uh, growing today, or growing today. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna start growing them today, um, are squash. Now squash, you can usually just start those from seed, like right, right in the ground and it's not a big deal. However, because of the squash vine borer problem that we have in this part of the country, it's really advantageous you can start them early and by the time they get into the ground, they're like pretty big um, because the faster they grow, by the time, uh, squash vine borer season comes around they'll be nice and strong um, and they can withstand the pest a little bit better um, or you have more availability to like cut off some of the damaged area so I will be starting squash today um, and I'm gonna try zucchini some early another good thing if you have squash vine borer problems is to do varieties that that are early varieties so this is early golden summer crookneck um, so getting one that is that produces fast and getting it started pretty early if you have squash vine borer problems is definitely important also lufa here's a fun little story for you lufa grows really well in this part of the country because it's really hot um, and 
I haven't grown Lufa yet, but I see my community garden has a very large um, population of uh, Mandarin elders, um, and they all grow Lufa. And they eat it when it's young, they let it dry, it, it just like, it does so well in our area. Um, so I'm really excited to grow Lufa this year. Um, but my, uh, I have a plot neighbor and she is like a 90 year old woman and she doesn't speak very much English. <laughs> um, but she gave me a Lufa squash, like a young one to actually like eat. And she was trying to explain to me how to prepare it. And, um, she kept like squatting and saying chicken baby and I was like I was like what in God's name is going on and I could not figure out what she was trying to tell me the directions I had gotten thus far were to chop up the, the loofah squash put it in a pan and fry it and that was how far I got or not fry it but like saute it and that was how far I got and then I was just heckin' confused. Thank goodness one of my good friends was there helping me plant out the garden that year. Shout out Gabby, because I don't think, I don't know if I would have ever figured out what, what she, she was trying to tell me. And she was telling me to scramble an egg. And she was literally squatting and like acting like she was catching something coming out of her booty and saying chicken baby. And it took me, and, and finally my friend Gabby was like, she's talking about an egg. And so I was like, oh, an egg. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so yeah, that was the first time I ever ate Lufa. It definitely, it definitely has a little bit of slime. It's got like that okra slime, um, but that slime is so good for your digestive system. So just like, I know slime is weird, but like embrace the slime. It's gonna be okay. So I am growing Lufa in honor of Miss Shuli this year and uh Shuli Shuli's still with us she's she's still getting after it she's it's a little bit harder these days like I said she's like she's like freaking 90 years old and uh I used to see her out there like every day I mean she just she gets after it so that takes care of all of our cucumbers and then I actually have three of these biodegradable pots left so I'm gonna do a little experiment. We're gonna use some of these biodegradable pots for the squash, and then we'll use some of the plastic pots. Um, and really the only other thing that I'm gonna do is do all the basil and the parsley. And with sowing herbs, the seeds are usually really small, so I like to kind of just like press them into the top of the soil, and then until they germinate, I go buy them every day, and I actually just spritz them with water. Um, and I always get really good germination on my basil. So. I'm gonna get this finished. My tan is still marinating. My salsa is still cooking. I'm still hydrating post-workout. I'm technically watching my dog because he's laying out here with me and I'm starting seeds. So whoever told you in your life that everything's not possible, well, they might be right, but so far not today. I haven't messed any of these things up, but TBD. <laughs> Happy gardening. Read the back of your labels. Get some native knowledge from those around you, those other gardeners. And we're getting close, at least here in the South, we're getting close. And if you're not in the South, you can live vicariously through me. That's totally fine. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening and see you.